everybody. Saya here for standing in for Heather uh, for Mini Mag today. We are doing this super fancy big old fish for our project today. He's a wild flounder and he sure does look wild with all of these fancy details on him. I'm going to show you how to make that. What we're going to need to do this project is cardboard. I've already got my fish cut out. Now, as you can see on the bigger piece that Heather made, we've got this really thick corrugated cardboard. So if you have that, it'll make this project a lot easier to do. However, I do not have any more of that. So if you, like me, do not have any of the large corrugated cardboard, you can also use some thin cardboard. I think this was a shoe box that I unfolded and I've already cut it into the shape of a fish. So, you know, any cardboard you have will work. And of course, you'll need your adult to help you cut this with a box cutter or X-Acto knife. Just figuring out which way I want my fish to go. You're going to need quite a few materials for this. You're going to want to have some wires. You'll want to have a glue gun handy uh, just to help things stay in place. And of course, you're going to want a nice collection of different colors of paint that you can use to make your fish look really, really funky and exciting. You're going to need some beads, plastic beads. I've just got your standard pony beads, but you can use all sorts of fun shaped beads. You're going to need some recycled bottle caps. I'm also going to use these two metal caps to kind of give the eyes a little more detail towards the end. And you'll want to get some other little bits and bobs like googly eyes. Uh, I've got these little round head fasteners, some coffee stir sticks, and I've also got a couple of golf, I had some golf tees handy. I don't see them here now, so maybe I won't use them. So yeah, just kind of any uh, little bits and bobs you find lying around can be used for this project. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to take, oh, we need a Sharpie. I'm going to start with my Sharpie, and what I'm going to use that for is to mark out the lines that are going to divide my different colors of paint. So I'm going to do one big line on the tail. And now I'm not using the teeny teeny point of my Sharpie. I'm kind of using this broad side of it where the marker is thicker because I want to get really, really, really nice, big, pronounced lines on this project. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the chat section and I will do my best to answer it. So I'm going to make another line over here. Now I'm going to draw my fish's mouth and we're going to give him great big teeth. And the teeth are actually going to take up most of the fish.
and again, just making sure we're really thickening up those lines so that we can still see them when we paint around them. So we've mapped out our fish's mouth. Now we're going to get to paint him. So I'm going to mix a little bit of my white paint with my blue paint so I can get a nice light blue color. And that's the color that I want to paint this back end of my fish. and being very careful to make sure that I still leave space for those marker lines. And if you need to thicken them up a little bit on the opposite side of the paint, you can also do that. Now I want to paint the rest of my fish kind of a teal color. So I'm going to mix a little bit of blue and green together and then mix lots and lots of white paint into that to get this nice bright turquoise. You, however, can paint your fish any color you want, of course. It's up to you. This is your creative project. So don't feel like you have to use the same colors as I am using.
you want to be very careful when you go around your marker lines. So you may want a little bit of help from an adult when you're going and painting close to the marker lines. Just so you can make a clean line. You also don't want to use too much paint if you use too much paint it's going to take a very long time to dry and we don't want to take too too long before we start gluing things together. Acrylic paint is nice for this because it can dry pretty quickly if you're not layering it on too thick. So again next to this line I'm being as careful as I possibly can. If you're using the thick corrugated cardboard that has a nice smooth surface, this is going to be a lot easier. But if you're using something like a, a pizza box or any other kind of cardboard that has these little ridges, you'll definitely want to take your time and go nice and slow. Oh, I see in the chat, Parker's watching and making a fish today. Awesome! I hope you're having lots of fun so far, Parker. And of course, you guys let me know if you have any questions. It's a little different. I usually do some other programs, so I'm not sure exactly uh, the approach Heather takes with you guys, but I hope I'm doing a good job. <laughs> Hey, we're almost done painting most of our big old fish today. Once we get the main colors laid down, then we can get into the fun stuff. All right, and now the last thing we need to do here is we need to draw our teeth and oh, you know, I forgot that I still also need to give the fish some lip color. So we're going to put some red into the mix here and I'm going to take a smaller brush just because we're working with some finer detail here. Ooh, maybe that's too small. I feel like that's going to take forever if I use that little guy. So I'm going to go with a slightly bigger brush. There we go. Always a good idea to choose the best tools for the job. All right, so we've almost got this fish's big funny face completed. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that red to the end of his tail too. Actually, I think I might mix some purple in with the red as well, just to give it a little bit of a different, different shade of red. I think I'm going to add a little bit to the fish's mouth too, just because this red is a little bit transparent and the purple will make it a little less see-through. And now even if you are finding that some of your paint is going over your marker lines, that's okay because when your paint is dry, you can go right over it again with your marker if you decide that that's what you want to do.
Okay, so we've got our fish's main colors done. Now I want to go back with my marker and give him teeth, big old teeth. So I'm going to make one big line just straight through, just a straight line from one corner of the mouth to the front of your fish. And then you can just make all sorts of lines at different angles, and that'll be your fish's teeth. You can make them pointy, you can make them kind of square if you want. Whatever works for you. You can try making the lines for the teeth at different angles too, because this will kind of add to the really funny, silly effect we have on this fish. Gives them lots of personality. I'm going to add one more tooth and then I think I'm happy with my fish's teeth. And on top of that, the paint is starting to dry. So now we can start adding some fun things to our little fishy friend here. Now one of the things that I want to do before I start sticking, before I glue these on, is you can use some of the lids that you have to make circle patterns. So I'm actually going to spread out some of my yellow paint here. I'm going to, ooh, this one's smaller. I'm going to dip the edge of this cap into some paint. I can clean them off later when I actually glue them on. I'm going to start making circles on my fish with paint. Just like that. Maybe I'll put one on his tail. And let's see what other circle patterns I have. I have this circle here, and I'm going to go in with a bit more of that purple and make more circle patterns. It's almost like the fish's gills when you're adding all of these little circle patterns. It's so much faster than trying to paint these circles with a paintbrush because it's very, very hard to get perfect circles. And maybe we want to add some lines and dots. We're really having fun with patterns on this fish.
So you can go around your circles with a paintbrush making little dots. Another easy way to make nice uniform dots is to take the end of a pencil that has an eraser on it and you can just dip the eraser into paint and that'll give you these perfect perfect little circles. And I'm going to go in with some yellow as well. And instead of dots, I'm going to make some little lines going into my purple circles just to kind of switch up the texture that we've got here. And once you're happy with all of the different dots you can put on your fish and all the different textures you can do, we're going to let our fish dry for a little bit. But now is the fun part where we get to start adding and poking lots of things into the fish to give him fins. And if you've ever seen angelfish, they have all these sort of like wispy things that are on their fins. So... I think that kind of seems to be a little bit of the inspiration that Heather used for this guy. So we're going to bust out our trusty glue gun going right here. And now we're using the supplies like our coffee sticks and wire. So if you have corrugated cardboard, it's going to be easier to just stick these in. But if you don't, a little bit of hot glue will be really, really helpful right about now. You don't need a whole lot. You can just put a little bit and then just stick your coffee sticks in like that. And so I'll just show you what I did with my fish. If you didn't do this, this is okay. I used two layers of thin cardboard and glued them together before cutting. But if you just have normal cardboard, what you can also do, if you don't have two layers, is you can just put a little bit of glue on the back and then stick your coffee stick in like this. And then you won't be able to tell the difference between the one that's uh, stuck in and the one that's just glued onto the back. So there are always, there's always a way to do things. these guys in and I'm going to put some up top too
Oh, sorry. I had the fish out of the screen a little bit there. I didn't realize. So this is what I was just doing, was adding more of these sticks to the top of my fish. And now we can have some fun with some beads and some wire. So I'm going to cut a few pieces of wire about the same size. And then what I can do with those is put some, I'm going to glue them into the tail of my fish. And stick them in there. And I can put some beads down the end of the wire that isn't in my fish. Get some fun colors going there. Oh, we've got some gold beads. Neat. And then if you need to, you can just put some hot glue on the end of your wire and push a bead down over that and that'll keep your beads in place, just like that. And there's other fun things you can do with wire too. Maybe you want to do some kind of weird angler fish looking detail. So you want to take some soft wire. It's not going to hurt your hands too much to curl up. Again, we're just going to put some hot glue on the end of that and stick it towards the front of your fish. That's pretty fun looking. So yeah, all kinds of fun stuff you can do by adding beads. And we also had some of these little round head fasteners so you can also be sticking those into your cardboard again this is another one of those this is just one of those projects where whatever you have lying around is fair game for adding detail to your fish this is a bit of a long project but it's definitely worth it to have the end result which will be a very exciting art project I was very impressed when I saw Heather's. Hers looks like something you would buy in some kind of fun little arts and crafts store. She did a really great job on it. All right, I think it's a good time for us to start wrapping this up. And our paint is dry. So the last, last thing that you need to do is glue down the eyes on your fish. And so I have these little uh, caps from, or jar lids, sorry, not caps. The caps are the ones that we're going to glue on it. So I'm just going around the edge of these with the hot glue and I'm gluing those on. side by side, kind of towards the top of my fish, just a little bit above his mouth. They're going to look really silly. And if I need to, I can also brush a little bit of paint just to cover up the writing on them. And the red I'm using to paint them is a different red from the lids, so that almost kind of gives us an interesting uh, effect. It kind of adds a little more detail, a little more uh, depth to the color. We can just let that sit for just a moment. Oh, something else you can do, I'll show you, is you can also paint onto your coffee sticks. So you can make little stripes or you can make little circles on them. 
this is a project you want to spend lots of time having fun with and you know you can leave it and come back to it if you decide you want to but it's all about adding lots and lots of detail wherever you can possibly fit it and that's what's going to be the most fun and give you the most satisfying results is if you take time to add lots of details and they don't have to be complicated like if you can see what I'm doing on camera I'm just making little little circles and little lines nothing super complicated but the reason pattern is so important to art is that even if you're just making patterns with simple shapes when something is just exploding with lots and lots and lots of patterns the way it draws your eye around makes it very interesting and our brains really really like it I'm just going to do a few more of these little details while we're waiting for our eyes to dry I'm going to change it up and start adding some purple to our little fin guys I'm curious what other household items people think would be a fun uh, thing to add to this fish so if you feel so inclined leave a comment in the chat box about what other household items you have lying around that you might use for this project Okay, so our paint is dry now, so I'm going to add the finishing touch on our fish by gluing down our plastic bottle cap lids. I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to add one on the other eye. very weird and now you can use googly eyes or you can paint the middle of the eye in whatever you want I'm gonna use googly eyes because they're silly and fun just a tiny little dab of glue there and you can even decorate the little jar lids with a few dots. Again, just getting lots and lots of pattern in there. By the time you're done this fish, it should just be exploding with all kinds of patterns and dots and circles and fun stuff like that. All right, Mini Mag, it has been super fun to do this project with you. I'll uh, show you a more complete view of what I ended up with for my funky fish pretty silly now next week what we're going to be doing is a paper and painting project called snakes in the grass so uh, I'm not sure if it'll be me or Heather but one of us will be doing that project with you and as usual if you want to see any of our other projects for oh oh you're welcome Lindsay and Parker <laughs> um, so yeah if you want to see any of our other projects you can go to reddeermuseum.com and uh, check out our blog that has all of our different programs uh, we can also be found on Facebook Instagram and Twitter as well as YouTube at Red Deer at Red Deer Museum have a great day everybody bye